you're listening to episode number 398. We are grabbing the keys to unlock the mailbox and answer all of your great questions today on the Today Show. On the Today Show? On the Today's Show. Wow, I didn't know we were going to be on the Today Show. <laughs> that's on the that's, Today Show. That's pretty epic right there. Are you saying I should do this whole intro over again, or can we keep going? We can keep going. Okay. I think that was pretty good. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, this is, this is the Unlocking the Magic podcast. I'm Bruce. That's Constantina slash Connie depending on what platform you're on. Casey's cool. You can call me Casey too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're going to answer some of your questions. We've got a whole bunch of questions on the show today. So yeah. we're going to answer some of those as many as we can. This might be a two-parter because this is a really long episode or a lot of questions we have going on here. But, you know, we're going to get to as many as we possibly can. Last week, we had a special guest, Dan Kenny, a.k.a. Guy in the Chair, and a.k.a. Jarvis, answering all some and your, your technical questions, I think some strategy questions that you guys had. And that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. it was a lot of questions too about, you know, we, can we do the same thing for Disneyland next time? We did a lot of Genie Plus, Lightning Lane. It was like a lot of technical questions that it, we don't often talk about on the podcast. So we thought it was a good idea to bring Dan on and answer those because he's in Orlando and he goes quite often. But he's also a Disneyland native. Yeah. So and yeah. Someone asked on YouTube, which you should go subscribe to our YouTube channel, by the way. That would be awesome. And UTM TV. If you just search in whatever podcast platform you listen to UTM TV, hit that subscribe button. That would be really, really helpful to us. A little bit of Universal, a little bit of Disney news over there on that one. Uh, but someone asked on YouTube, hey, can Dan come on and answer some Disneyland questions? Does he know about that? And I'm like, yeah, he grew up in Disneyland. Yep. <laughs> so you know, He's actually been to Disneyland, maybe not more because he's an annual pass holder, but he for sure grew up in Disneyland. Yeah, so it's great to have him on our team, and we're just happy that we can do this for you and get your questions answered. But today, I'm excited because the rest of these questions are pretty great as well. These are all submitted either through Instagram or we've had some emails these are great. So, and to me, I think one of the most rewarding aspects of doing the show is just being able to connect with you. Yeah. And I love connecting with you all on Twitter or Instagram and, uh, you know, you're, I think you're on TikTok a little bit more. So if you interact with us on TikTok, you being me, yeah, Constantina, that's yeah. you, you, if you interact with us on TikTok or Instagram, it's most likely you, if it's Twitter, it's probably me. You can kind of tell the rhythm of who's who, depending on the post. Yeah, if it's nice <laughs> and nice. pleasant, it's Constantina. If it's a little snarky. It's always Bruce. Or provocative, it's definitely me. <laughs> Disney provocative, that is. Yeah, that's what I mean by Disney. Like, I today tweeted out, I finally tweeted at Bob Iger. Oh. I said, hello, Mr. Iger. Can oh. I please help fix Disneyland pizza? Mm -hmm. I know you like good pizza. My friend makes pizza at your house for parties. Yeah. I'll do it for free. Did we get a response? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Hold on to that. I don't know if I ever will, but I Everybody, I, if you can, tag him so well, that we can, he can know we're legit. <laughs> yeah. Well, a good lesson for the kids out there. What's that? The answer is always no if you don't ask. That is a great point. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take my shot today. Well, it's just amazing how many people take the time out of their day to ask questions, comment. It's just really fun to be able to connect with you, listening, and just provide our opinions. It's just fun. Yeah, 100%. So these questions, I know we asked for names, but some of these are Instagram names, so I'm going to do my best. Okay. And I, I know, Bruce, you will too. Oh, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to do my best, and my best probably isn't that great, but I'm going to try my hardest, that's for sure. Okay, so the first one is from Chris Kelly Drummer. Which attraction needs... Chris Kelly Drummer. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Which attraction needs a major film first? And they go on to list Tower of Terror, Space Mountain, or Expedition Everest. Now, before we answer this, we have to talk about the, you know, the elephant in the room here is the fact that two of these have had some films on behalf of the attraction. Which two? Well. I know Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror with Steven Gutenberg, right. the world's best thespian, right? <laughs> What's that mean? Like a really great actor. Oh, okay. That's what Come thespian on. means? I think so. Well, I hope if so. If not, I'm sorry. We'll edit we'll that. Edit <laughs> Word of the show. But, I mean, that's just a fun movie. It's kind of hard to get. I was searching on Disney+, Plus, couldn't find it. You kind of have to go through certain avenues to try to find the actual film. But it's just fun. It's a really funny, spooky movie about the actual attraction. And to me, whenever you can blend movies with... Disney attractions, I'm all in. So yeah. I don't care if it's cheesy or what. I love it. And then the second one with Space Mountain, it's not really direct to this one, but 
don't you think Tomorrowland with George Clooney oh, yeah. kind of has that that? Yeah, space definitely. Mountain. I forgot about Tomorrowland. Yeah, I don't know how you forget about Tomorrowland. It's such a great movie. Well, love, not great, but like ha- got, half of it's great. I was just talking to somebody about this. A friend of mine was asking. Oh, I said she, they were going on and on about just like certain events happening, and I said you got to stop. You got to start thinking positive. Have you ever seen the movie Tomorrowland? And, she goes, no, I mean, and I tried to, I got through like 25 minutes and I had to shut it off. And I said, that's where you went wrong. You got to get through that first half hour and then the movie gets better yeah. and it makes sense. The first like 25 minutes, I think is kind of, I mean, I love it, but I, I could see others point of view of really not it's wanting. It's a slow process to get it going. There. Yeah. Yeah. I has, agree. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's true. So I don't know, but Expedition Everest, I really couldn't find anything. I mean, they've done... On National Geo- Geographic on Disney Plus, back in 2020, they did a show about Expedition Everest where they had scientists go up and install a weather station, which is the world's highest weather station. But there's no, I couldn't figure out like a, a direct movie. So I guess maybe that would be the one that I could answer. That's a good one. I, I, I had that. So, like, listen, I don't know any of that. Okay. But I had Expedition Everest as mine anyway. Okay. So I knew that there was a Tower of Terror movie. And I knew that there's a Haunted Mansion movie. Right. I didn't really put together, like you, Space Mountain in Tomorrowland, which is a good Is it? I don't know. Yeah, because it's kind of like, when you think of Tomorrowland, you think of Space Mountain. They show it. That's what you think of when you think of Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom in Disney World. I mean, I'm all for highlighting Space Mountain in any way. So I would be so for a cool space movie where you're, I don't know, what would it be about? I got to think about that. Because to me, when I'm on Space Mountain, I like to kind of- Jetsons. Yeah. Like a family of the future. I do have a Jetson sticker on my computer. <laughs> but I chose Expedition Everest, not anything Disney related, mm-hmm. but just because like I'm super nerdy into like Bigfoot shows and alien shows. So yeah. Expedition Everest in like Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates kind of oh, could merge, right? Yeah. And do a movie, something about maybe it could be either a documentary where it's Kind of like real life, like they're really going to search for uh, the Yeti. Yeah. Or it could be a totally made up, just a regular good time movie that. Either way, they yeah. can't go wrong. I so, feel like that would be a good one. For, that's what I would be interested in. Yeah. And then did you think of any that aren't necessarily examples on this list? Because the one that I thought of was actually Big Thunder Mountain. I thought that could be a really cool Halloween movie because Big Thunder Mountain if you haven't had the time to listen to the episode, I forget what number it is, but you can do a search on our on our website. Is we did an unlocking episode on Big Thunder Mountain, and, and a lot of people may may not know that it's it's about a haunted train and a, a phantom manor. Is it's it's a really haunted place, yeah. so that could be a kind. I of I think a they're cool coming out with them. I think they're coming out with a Big Thunder Mountain movie. Wait, hold the phone. I thought they had. I thought there was an announcement, and I could be wrong, but I thought I read that there's there was. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I guess. Oh. It was in the works. Like, it's not anything that is named or the actors, but it's, like, in the works to come up with a Big Thunder Mountain movie. Yeah. I, I think thought that was the case. I just thought that that would be a cool... I'm all for I'm all for it, right? I mean, you have, you have so many fun attractions that could be movies. What about The People Mover? Would that be a good movie? <laughs> That's just, like, transportation of the future. Or just you sitting there relaxing. Yeah. Just like a Zen movie. You just, like, real quiet Zen movie for 20 minutes of just sitting on The People Mover. I think that would be fun. Get coffee. Love, I love I love the people. I agree. Here. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so the next one is Lolo Beach. What is your favorite non-park activity on Disney World po- property? Shopping, golf, exploring hotels, et cetera. What do you think? Not shopping. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. not a shopper. You definitely aren't. But I would say either for me, it's either sitting by the pool. If it's like a non-park day. And it's nice out. Sitting by the pool for a little bit of time for me is good. But then I got to get out and do something. So for me, it would be hang out by the pool for a little bit and then go. I like resort hopping. I don't know why, but I like it. It's fun. I mean, there's so many different resorts and themes and you really can just escape to a lot of these places. Yeah, so I enjoy going around to look at different resorts, seeing what food's available at the different resorts. It's always got to involve food. Yeah, so that's just kind of like what I want to do. But then I do like sitting by the pool, so maybe sandwich that where you go to the pool in the morning, you go a little resort hopping, and then you go back to the pool at night. Yeah, I really like just exploring, speaking of resorts, but all the activities, there's so many at Fort Wilderness Campground. There's so much to do there. That's one of my favorite. If 
if we're in the mood to do something like adventurous with the family, I would say that's my number one pick. You know what you do have to do though? What's that? You got to wear your relief band. What? <laughs> Where are you going with that? I said, you know, this, uh, these relief bands, if you go to Disney or on a cruise like us in September, you got to make sure you bring your relief band. Cause if you're like you and you get sick or nauseous, you don't want to, you don't want to have that ruin your trip. Definitely not. So this relief band is a band that goes around your wrist and it sends vibrations where it helps you relieve the nausea feeling. And it lets you go on any attraction you want, go on the cruise because you won't have to worry about getting nauseous. It's no medication and it's just a thing that looks cool and you wear on your wrist. <laughs> it makes Bruce happy because I'm not drowsy and I can keep up with all the activities at Fort Wilderness Campgrounds. Right? And I'm not drowsy because it's non-medicated -medica and it's just an easy thing to wear. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. I can't fly without it now. I, It's just been a total... I don't want to say, is it a game changer? Yeah, it's a game changer because you I, can I do things now that you weren't able to do. Like on our Instagram, I just put how you look on the teacups. <laughs> and with your relief, man, I you can, can go on the teacups. And it's like, you know what? Now mom can enjoy us with the family on the teacups, whereas before she couldn't because she was worried about getting sick. I was trying to think of a new phrase other than game changer, but I, I can't. That's the best phrase to use. Well, here's the other thing. They're giving our listeners, which is you, a a code for 20% off if you use the code UTM at checkout. So go to reliefband.com, R-E-L-I-E-F band.com. Buy anything you want. Use the code UTM. You're going to get 20% off plus free shipping. Just you for go. you. Just try it out. Go do it. Help us out here. All right. Next question. When is the best time to visit Walt Disney World? Crowd wise, this is a really hot question. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, when is the best time to visit Walt Disney World? I was going to say any day that ends in Y. Right? I mean, really. I think low crowd crowd wise. I, I don't know if I want to answer this question. That. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You got you to gotta join Club UTM for all the hot deets. <laughs> Sorry about that. But really, I mean, there are cr crowd calendars that you can look at. I don't necessarily think that really low crowds is ever really going to be a thing again. Disney has gotten very smart about maneuvering and doing things around these low crowd times so that it, it attracts people, right? So either it's for competitions and all these different festivals, they try to bring you in. So I I don't know, other than it being like super, let's just say, I would say like September, mid-September, when kids are traditionally going back to school, you might find it to be low crowd wise then or right after the holidays, there's like a little window. But it, then again, it's still every every state, every part of this country takes vacations in different times of year. So I just, I'm always about trying to go when it's good for you and your family. If you're really, truly worried about crowds, I would say avoid certain times, like the holiday week of Christmas. That would be something I would just avoid. But other than that, I would say you got to just make it work whenever you can. Here, I can't tell you when is a good time to go for you listening to the podcast. Yeah. I can tell you when I'm never going. <laughs> and maybe that'll help you make a decision. I'm never going around Christmas or New Year's. Mm -hmm. Never going February vacation in the Northeast. It's just funny because you say never, but you've you've gone February. Well, and I've learned. We've gone President's Week. It's not that bad. And it's it's not that bad. Listen, it's always busy there. There's never a time in Disney where you look at your, unless you go to the after hours events. Yeah. And they're slower wait or no wait times and you get to go whenever you want but well, like during regular days yeah. it's always busy so what you have to look at is when is the cheapest time to fly maybe yeah and when is the most availability for the resort you want to stay at and the restaurant you want to go to that's how i think so not necessarily like low crowds because it's never going to seem like there's low crowds that's the thing it's never going to seem like it i mean like i said there like are we, some windows but it's it's not i don't think what it was years ago yeah we can go buy a ticket for 50% less, you know, the end of January, beginning of January versus what it costs for that same flight when you go during February vacation. Flying wise is, is big for us. If you're driving and that doesn't matter to you, I would say, you know, go when it's right for you. If you're really, truly worried about crowds, just, just avoid holidays. That's it. Listen, look at, here's how you look at what Disney thinks is a busy time. Go on the Disney website and they have tiered pricing now. That's true. So if you look at the pricing that Disney has, the higher the ticket price, the more busy Disney thinks it's going to be. Supply and demand wise, that's why that ticket's higher. 
Yeah. So if you look at the website and you say, oh, you know what? In September, the first week of September, that's the cheapest tickets there is to Magic Kingdom. That's probably going to be the least busy time. Right. Not going to be not busy, but it's going to be the least busy. Next question from Neurologic Official. That's a cool name. That is a cool name. What is your first memory? I, like I got I to gotta, I gotta sit up straight for this answer. <laughs> right. What is your first memory of Walt Disney World? I like this one. Oh, you, can I go? Can I give you mine? Let's go. My So I didn't get to go as a kid. If you listen to this podcast for any significant amount of time, you know that I was not a privileged child and I didn't get to go to Disney at all. My We just couldn't afford it. I didn't get to go until I was an adult. My first memory of Disney is taking our oldest daughter to the Garden Grill, believe it or not, for that character dining. That's so ironic. I don't know why I remember that so much, but I, I like that's the one memory that sticks in my mind, sitting at the Garden Grill. And this is way back when I didn't know what I didn't know anything about Disney, really, because I didn't go at all. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know anything about Disney. I didn't know what character dining was. And we went to the Garden Grill, and she had a good time. She wasn't even one, I don't think. She had a great time. She was very photogenic at yeah. that age. And it was she wasn't necessarily super into the characters yet, but she wasn't – it was like you. Like, she liked them from the distance. She did some good photo. We had some great photo ops. Oh, she's she's definitely my child when it yeah. comes to not wanting – like, wanting to see them but yeah. not interact. That's that's what it was. So we, but it was fun and exhausting all in the same yeah. same breath. But I'm glad that sticks out for you. That's awesome. Definitely. And then the other one after that would be just being at Epcot. When yeah. I think it was like our second trip when our, G was six months old, and you we had to walk around. She was like such a active. Yeah, she was such an active mental kid that she wanted to walk and she couldn't and move, and you she had to carry her around like yeah. a that coverall thing. So she was like up in alert otherwise she would cry cry yeah she was born five years old yeah so it's <laughs> so she was very frustrated being in her own skin that uh, she couldn't yeah. keep up with the, i remember yeah. walking around epcot with you <laughs> carrying her and like the other two and the in the carrying her i was like jogging she yeah. wanted me to like i was like gianna i'm not that kind of mom <laughs> like i can't run so <laughs> I, those are the two memories that stick out in my you mind you got the wrong parents here all right so next question what about you oh, my question my answer sorry my first memory is being in Walt Disney World with my parents, and specifically the one day I remember landing on the plane. We were so excited. It was such a luxury to fly, and I remember how excited my dad was to finally give me my wings, when I, or the, the pilot gave me my first set of wings, and I was just through the moon so happy that day. And then we went right from the airport. We put our bags down. I think we were staying at the Hilton Hotel, and we went to the Magic Kingdom. And I just remember being so hot, so hot, but didn't care because I was just having the time of my life. And that's when Mickey's Mickey's house was still there. So I have a lot of pictures of me going through Mickey's house. And I just felt through the moon so happy. It didn't even matter that I was so hot. Never changed from the outfit I was wearing in, from Boston because <laughs> I was just so excited. And I remember exactly what I was wearing. I remember how I felt, but it was just it was just the best day ever. So that's my first, first memory. That's great. I wish yeah. I had memories of kids i wish i could go as a kid I can know. i go back in time and go as a kid i would love to do that maybe all right jason asks besides the parks do you read any disney books or listen to any other disney podcasts this is a great question this I, is a great question yeah uh, we read a lot of disney books i haven't i so i'm not a great reader I, yeah. i'm gonna be honest with you yeah but reading is audio audio books is reading i was gonna say that oh, okay Sorry, so i was gonna I say just, like really, i'm not a great reader like yeah retention wise yeah. i can't read it and then retain the information. I have a really hard time with that. Mm -hmm. But I love audio books. Right. So back when we first started this podcast, I used to I used to try to figure out all the history books about Walt that I could read because I loved that entrepreneurial spirit that he had and building the business of Disney, not just like having fun at the parks, but the actual business. So I read all those or listened to all those audio books about Walt. And I think we have a couple here. I love... All the books about Walt, I love Marty Sklar. Yeah. All his books are great, easy reading. And um, Rolly Crump actually has written books, and those are great. It's just so much fun to me to dive deep into certain books. And I have them in my living room. I sometimes flip through them, even if it's like I know I'm not going to start a book from start to finish. Just kind of fun to flip through the pages and read a few yeah. few, few paragraphs even of whatever they, they were writing about. And that, that to me was fun. As far as podcasts go, Disney, I was a big, and I'm still a big fan of Lou Mangiello. I think he's amazing. We've had him on the show. Yeah. He was definitely our inspiration to start our own podcast even. So I loved listening to him. But ever since we started our own, 
I stopped not because I don't love him, but I never wanted to be in a situation where I accidentally put out this, a similar podcast and like, I wouldn't want anybody to say, Hey, you're copying. You know, I, he said that too. And I was like, you know what? There's nothing like it's going to happen eventually that you put out a similar podcast and and people are going to think about that, even though you didn't do it. Right. So I agree. But yeah, you know that I have a different reason of why I don't listen to Disney podcasts. It's because we do, we record every day. I know there's a lot of content about Disney Disney here. And it's (laughs) how much of that can you possibly listen to when you're doing it? Every single day. It's like when you work at a restaurant, you don't want to come home and cook. You want to just enjoy someone else cooking for you. I'm Uh, plugging Star Talk Radio with Neil deGrasse. Yeah, that's a great one. (laughs) Listen, again. That's my favorite. I like Lou Mangiello, too. and I did listen to him. I think on our first trip when we drove down, I listened to Lou all the way down there. The kids even did. And I've met Lou at some conferences, and we're friends, and he does a great job in his podcast. So if, if if there's one podcast I would suggest you listen to other than ours, it's probably him. Yeah, for sure. Okay, next question. Do you listen to any others that you want to no. give a plug to? I'm just a super I don't listen nerd when it any. comes to science. So I'm always plugging I'm always plugging his show. I don't listen to any other. Do you think he knows? Disney podcast, no. <laughs> you have no idea when we were written up in that article in the New York Times about the 13 um podcast for Wandering Souls. I was more excited about the fact that we were on the same article with with Star Talk than I was the fact that I was in the article. <laughs> That's good because I'm a fangirl. All right, moving on. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Brittle Gibson, I would like to know more about your opinions on Disney California Adventure restaurants. That's a good one. Non quick. That is a great one. That's a good one because I think for specifically for Disneyland and California Adventure, I don't necessarily know if you actually have to do a lot of sit down dining. Not if you're, especially not if you're a native. If you're not a native. If you're not a native, but even if you're visiting. I think to me, those parks, maybe Disneyland more than Disney California Adventure actually, is, is, is about trying all the quick service foods because it's so different than what you can find at Walt Disney World. And to me, that's part of the experience. It's kind of like, I've, I've said this before, but to me, Disneyland, I sort of treat it like I do Epcot. Like yeah. I go around and I, three to land, I, and we don't spend a ton of money doing it because we, we share. So it's, you get to try a lot of things. So by the time I'm done, I'm rolling out of Disneyland. I don't ever even think about doing a sit down. Plus I don't want to, I don't want to wait. Like when we go to Disneyland, we it, you usually go for two, three days in the parks. I don't really want to waste an hour or two hours in a sit down restaurant because yeah. I'm not going to be there all the time. I'm only there for, you know, well, this is the, the past of when we've gone. We've only gone once every couple of years. Right. So I didn't want to waste time. If I only have one day in California Adventure, I don't want to spend two hours of that in a sit-down restaurant. We do a lot of eating in out west. We do a lot of eating. There's so many quick service yeah, places. We do a lot of eating. And that you could try out as a non-native that you're going to have a great time and experience that you're not going to want to spend time at a sit down. At least I don't, but maybe we're different. Yeah. And f- as far as sit down, we've actually heard really great things about lamp, la- lamp light lounge. And, and um, we've looked at the menu. The, again, the only reason why we didn't do a sit down was because we literally were stuffed yeah. after all the things that we ate, but I've heard really great things. And I was looking through and seeing what other people were getting and it, it all looked great. It really did to me, like something like the blue Bayou. I think you're buying more of the, ambiance and experience of being in that yeah. restaurant i don't necessarily know if the menu is that wow you know for for someone that's a personal thing we have some people in club utm that are disneyland natives too and they have suggested a few restaurants maybe we can put out a post or something soon yeah or maybe in a podcast we'll do on utm tv we'll do best restaurants to go to in disneyland or california adventure because i that sounds like it could be a whole podcast episode sounds like we need to start finally doing some more sit down dining like all right i'll take one for the team <laughs> We really should. It's just hard because it's really hard to walk past the beignets and not order a dozen. Well, we are at Disneyland. Uh, you know, we just recently became Disneyland annual pass holders. So now that we're Disneyland annual pass holders, maybe it'll be us. It'll be incentive for us to go report live from these restaurants and, you know, kind of be like a research trip. Is that your dream? Yeah. Yeah. My research, I dream to be a research restaurant <laughs> Disney person. Yes. <laughs> Me too. That's definitely my dream. Okay. All right. Next question. All right. It literally says, all right, I've got a would you rather for our very first cruise, three nights on the new wish or four nights on the Disney dream. My spoiled self wants the wish, but I know an extra day would be great. We have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. Which one would you pick? That's a great question. In all fairness and transparency, we haven't been on the wish yet. 
No, the wish is, we just saw the, what was it called? I wanted to call it Unlocking the Wish, but it wasn't. It was kind of Unlocking the Wish, but on <laughs> Disney Plus. There's a TV show, The, making the of. Creation of the Wish. That's what it is. The Making of the Wish. And gosh, it looks incredible. What they've done with the theming in there is just outstanding. It, But it is a very big cruise ship. Not that the dream is small, but it's just, it seems like in comparison much bigger and a little bit more of a challenge to navigate. So I think the three nights might not be enough to even get to see a smidgen of what's on the ship. So you, by the time you board and you leave, it's like, I feel like you would be back already. I liked the dream. I yeah. enjoyed it. Uh, I thought the food was good. It was a big enough ship, but it wasn't so big that you felt overwhelmed. And we went on it for our first cruise it was on the dream. And you really felt like it was easy to navigate. And we went, we did a five night, which I thought was perfect to me. I think three nights is too short too short of a trip but i mean if that's all you can do that's all you can do, what do well you that's not the question the yeah. question is would you rather that's true it's not what i can do <laughs> well yeah i think i would rather do the dream the four nights i just think that that one extra night might help you decide even if you're not really in love with cruising i think that will help give you that chance to really know all i need to navigate is from my room to the food quarters to the slide back to my room bruce needs the room the the the- I told myself we're going on a cruise in September. Yeah. And I was after, you know, I watched we watched that show on Disney Plus in, you know, being in the room, you can get room service. It's part of yeah. the fee that you pay, right? You can just get whatever you want for room service. And I said, you know, why didn't we do that last time? Well, I want to go to the guy and be like, listen, at six o'clock, <laughs> I want coffee delivered to my room oh, every day. Don't even ask me. You're making requests. At twelve thirty I want this. At eight PM I want this. And like just that's my schedule. Just give it to me. Yeah, just do it every time. Don't even ask me. <laughs> We're going to bring, have to bring some stretchy clothing. You're in bathing suit. Oh. You're just going to walk around the ship. You know, walking around the ship is great exercise. It is, but really, I mean, it truly is. I think that's a that's a good that's a good bonus. I'm with you. I'm going to say the dream. I, I actually answered that question, and I said, you know what? Just Four nights of the it, dream would be great. It's, it's not enough time. Three nights is just not enough time, in my opinion, to really understand what's... All, what's the what's the cruising is all, what cruising is all about? If it's Wait, we just time. got past page one. We have three more. Oh, this is gonna be like a four hour podcast. But by the way, if you are interested in the wish, we actually do have a really awesome oh, yeah, right. group cruise ha- happening. Our agents are putting together a group cruise this May, so it's it's departing Memorial Day, May 29th through June second. It's it's leaving out of Port Canaveral and going to Nassau, Bahamas, and Disney's private island, Castaway Key. If you're interested in cruising i know that's right around the corner and typically the the closer you are to a cruise the higher you're going to pay in price however because this is a group cruise they were able to lock in a, a really great rate a year ago so you are will pay that small rate versus if you wanted to go on a cruise at a later date so yeah, plus they're off we're giving you guys a uh, anybody who buys it a, on i think we're giving them an onboard ship credit too yep that's happening so you can use that however you want you and should probably know that you should probably know that. So Dan over at Unlocking the Magic Travel can answer those questions for you if you're interested. But Dan just texted me. You're killing me, Smalls. What's that? Because I didn't know the answer. I didn't know what we were doing over there. <laughs> so if you want to know more, just keep in mind. Or if there's somebody that you know, I think there's three or four rooms left out of quite a bit. So just so you know, we we, we gathered these group cruises. The, the um should be a really good time for everybody going. I think that. I'm kind of jealous now that I saw the making of the wish. I right. was like, man, why didn't we get, ske- cause we're scheduled to go on a different cruise later this year, which, I, which will be exciting too. That's a uh, Halloween cruise. Well, I'm not convinced I'm a cruiser yet. Okay. I need to be, I need to go on one more. If okay. I, this next cruise that I do will determine if I'm a cruiser or not, because I went on the first one and my initial reaction after was like, mm, maybe I'm not a cruiser. And then watching people go on cruises and seeing people go, it's like, you know what? Maybe I am a cruiser. You know what I love most about it? What's that? I don't necessarily need to see the shows or anything. What I really love about cruising is that it's all inclusive. So you get your dining. You can eat whenever you want. It's like going to Disney World on the dining plan. It's even better than that because... It is better than that. It really is. You can eat as much as you want. And and it's all like you, you can get it delivered to your room. You know what I mean? And that... Plus, the scenery to me is absolutely breathtaking. Like, just remembering the moments at night when I was taking the kids up and we were seeing the stars in the sky, plus that scenery, plus the private island, to me, that's what, like, I don't need 
the, the shows and everything else is awesome, but it's like a bonus to me. I don't, if I didn't have, if I couldn't see any of that, I'd still love it. Great. <laughs> okay. Moving on. You, this is from Paige. You can only go to one park for the rest of your life. Which park do you choose? Which park do dun, I dun, choose? Dun. I can only go to one park for the rest of my life. That's right. I am choosing you Disneyland. You need more time. <laughs> You're choosing Disneyland, really? Yeah. I'm shocked, actually, just because I think... Um, no, actually, I'm not shocked because they have really good food in Disneyland, but... Disneyland has better food than the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. It's got consistent weather. That's true. You know, and it's Disneyland. It's where it yeah. all started. You're not wrong. I thought you were going to choose Epcot, though. No. Wow. I'm actually kind of... That's why I'm surprised. I'm choosing Magic Kingdom... Walt Disney World because I think it is to me I could stay in Tomorrowland forever. That's my that's my part that's my area of the park that I guess it does have that Walt feeling too cuz like Tomorrowland and in Disneyland as much as I love Disneyland doesn't have that same feeling whereas Walt Disney World you have so many of the old school attractions that really connect you to Walt Disney. If Magic if Magic Kingdom had Disneyland's food, I would choose Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Where I like the history and I like how it all no, started, I and I like the small feeling of Disneyland. See, but and you I, get Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, which no, you, you don't get, get in all. Disney World. So, I mean, I'm a California girl. I love California in every way, but I just there. I, maybe it is I'm going back to like my childhood when I think of Magic Kingdom as well. So I have that yeah. combined with that one park for the rest of my life. But I'll be on the People Mover <laughs> every day, all day. All right, next question, Eloise. Favorite Disney drink other than coffee? Uh, I was thinking about this, and I, I think I'm think I'm kind of boring. <laughs> you are kind of. Boring. I put water. I drink either water or coffee. I don't drink anything else. Literally, gonna edit that out. That's so embarrassing. What do I drink? <laughs> I there's so much to drink. I don't love coffee as much as Bruce, so I guess I'll answer this question. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Bruce is out. You really do. Actually, now that I think of it, you only drink coffee and water. Like I'll have a coffee or water. That's I don't literally. Drink any, a- I don't drink anything else. Ginger ale. Yeah, maybe ginger ale with dinner. <laughs> That's it. That's all you drink. Uh, not that I'm not boring, but I think that my choice of beverages is a little bit better. Maybe. I don't know. I love coffee too, but I'm not as big of a coffee drinker as Bruce. I love peach iced tea. I love the pog juice. Oh I like the gosh, pog juice too, but so it's good. a little too sweet for me. It's a little too sweet, but I like it. <laughs> I, need to be, I need to be like a little kid and be like, can I, can I have pog juice, but can you water it down for me? Yeah. It's a little too sugary. The Tatooine Sunset. At Galaxy's Edge. Again, of, a little too sweet. Really? That's why I drink water. What's so wrong? I don't annoying. know what's going on with me. I actually, this question really inspired me about doing literally a whole show or post or whatever about all the drinks you can get that are like mocktails. Yeah. I'm big on mocktails at home. That's all I love to make. I love, so there's a sparkling nojito at the Polynesian. And I love, I mean, I love mojitos, but this is a nojito and you can just drink as much as you want of it. And I love it. And there's just, I realize that there's just so many yummy drinks there. I mean, they're all filled with sugar. <laughs> That's the only, I guess, negative. I'm going to have to look at lower sugar offerings for those that can't have sugary drinks. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. You're going to have to make them. Sh- I wonder if we should check out next time we're there if they can make any of those sugar free. Ask them. Yeah. Is there two, if anybody knows that, by the way, please message me because I was on a, like a really low sugar diet for a while, which I want to get back on. But that was my, the hardest thing is not having like a drink yeah. that was like satisfying. Okay. Is there two different Tonga toasts? I tried one version, but it did not have the strawberry compote. Yes, there is. There's one version in Kona Cafe, which has the strawberry compote. That's a sit down place. And then there's Captain Cook's downstairs, which is the quick service which doesn't have that. And I think the strategy is maybe try, what would you say? You're a new t- new newcomer yeah. of Tonga, and you know you're going back to, let's say, the parks again someday. I would rather you try the one at Captain Cook's because I think that would, if you didn't like it, then I wouldn't feel so bad because it's not as expensive. You know what? I've said that in the past, and I think I've changed my mind. Oh, okay. I'll I'm so like- confident in the Tonga Toast, okay. and so many people like it. <laughs> all right, never mind. That I'm saying just go all in and go to the Kona. Never mind what I said. He's. I Tonga did say King. that in the past, though. I was I with know. you, and I was like, you know I what? Feel Maybe bad. I, f- I don't anymore. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel bad. Plus, it, well, in that case, it does also make it easier to, it's more attainable, obtainable, right? Because- You can have both, right? No, but you can, it's not that easy sometimes to 
if you have a car rental and you're going, you want to go to the Polynesian, sometimes it's not as easy to just park there. But if you have a reservation. Yeah, like exactly. Polynesian, yeah, you, you can't you get, sometimes you can't get into the Polynesian unless hard. you have a reservation. Yeah, so it just makes it easier. All right. What is your top thing in each park that you want to do but just haven't yet? Oh, this is, I have a list here. You have a lot of things. I do. Well, there's one thing. It said one thing, so I didn't over elaborate, but I did do the one thing. A lot of these have to do with financially. We just haven't been able to do it with the five of us. <laughs> so can I go? Yeah. Epcot, La Cellier. I've mm-hmm. always wanted to do that. Really? Yeah. The steakhouse. I've literally. I've. This is the first time I've ever. I've kind of wanted to do the steakhouse. We've heard Where it, have I talked been? it up pretty well about the steakhouse. You haven't talked it up. Magic to me. Kingdom. Stay in the castle suite. That's like a dream though that's what she said isn't it that's true <laughs> okay hollywood studios brown derby we haven't been in the brown derby i'd like to go to that the Cobb salad i'm just i just can't get see this is the thing i want to do it Cobb salad is like my favorite food i know it's silly it's like we always go to sci-fi i know because i can't i can't let go of the sci-fi i can't do it animal kingdom i'd like to do one of those tours that the animal kingdom has wild africa trek yeah i like what i want to do that that looks fun and then the water parks the glow party the Glow Nights look awesome. Which is coming up. They're having that pretty soon, so we're going to have to book one of those. I really want to do a Glow Party. I think our kids would really love the Glow Party. And, I mean, what's better than being in the pool late at night? Especially a warm Florida night That's what I'm with saying. warm water. You don't get that where we're from. I don't care how late into the summer season you are. Our pool never <laughs> warms up. Not only that, but even if you go to a water park here in midsummer, the water temperature gets lower at night because it gets real cool yeah so the water's never hot enough at night to like go to a water park here yeah it'd be you still be chilly Ugh, i hate that so that's mine what's yours epcot i want to do behind the seeds tour actually uh, we had a uh, club utm a couple of people go on yeah. that recently and really love it and i know i'm gonna love it so it's just something that i thought was affordable it's an affordable tour that i've always wanted to do can't believe we haven't done it yet to be honest with you Magic Kingdom, I didn't have anything until you wrote the Cinderella suite. So I'm, I guess, going to wish upon a star. <laughs> Say, how, I don't know how, but that would be amazing. Either that or one of the tours at Magic Kingdom you've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do one of the like the tours that go down to the Utilidors. But we stuff. just did the Waltz tour, so that's kind of yeah, like... I'm like, actually... Kind of checking that off the bucket list. Even though it's not the same tour, at least you did a tour. Okay. Speaking of Star, earlier I was talking about Star Talk yeah. Radio, and Neil deGrasse Tyson said something about aliens once, about how our brains wouldn't comprehend what we were seeing because it would just be something we're not used to, right? Yeah. So you just, could, there could be aliens in front of you, you would know, right? Well, that's kind of how I felt at Walt's tour and how I feel about all these tours now because I just can't process what I'm seeing fast enough for me to like, like I want. Well, that's why you got to secretly record them so you can go back later. And <laughs> I want to be in the moment. I want to just like sleep over. I really want to get, the experience to just set in. Um, it's really hard for me, even though I try to live by the moment, but that just, it's hard to process. Anyways, Hollywood Studios, I, I hope they bring back Dining with an Imagineer. I think that would be really cool. That would be fun. I haven't looked up to see, but I know that as of, I think if, I think as of now, it's still not back. I think that would be fun. If it, if it is back, I'm sure Dan will fill us in and get us, get us to do that because that would be great. Animal Kingdom, you mentioned the tours and the Wild Africa tra- track is something that I think it'd just be, it's different than seeing a tour at like the Magic Kingdom where you're trying to process everything. The Wild Africa track is like an adventure. Yeah. So I think I would be really into that. And then of course, Glow Night, I think, I'm, without a doubt. Definitely. Okay. You can only do one after hours event for the rest of your life. Which one are you choosing? This one's so easy for me. Go ahead. Take a guess. Christmas party. Yeah, of course. Mickey's not so... Mickey's very merry Christmas party. I said last time I went to that, if I'm ever in the Magic Kingdom area and that's going on, that's the only time I'm going to the Magic Kingdom It's is at that party. I love it too. I can't... I'm not even... If you ask me, I'm more of a Halloween party kind of person, but there's just something very special about the Christmas one. And we went last time and it was a hurricane and kind of rainy and it was still great. It was still magical. So how did they pull that off? If they can make it great for me in the rain in a hurricane, they can make it great anytime. And I'm going, I did have a lot of fun at the villains party. I thought it was very pumped up energy at the magic kingdom. You know, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing that for the rest of my life either, but I don't know. Is a Christmas party a little too soft for me? <laughs> It might be. Yeah, maybe I should choose villains. Choose the villains. I'm going to choose the villains. You're I'm sorry. I'm not good with them. 
I think folks at Club UTM get got to know me a little bit more and realize that it has nothing to do with like I love you know the Christmas cheer and all that. It's just it's so many feelings and sometimes I don't like getting so close to. Shout my out feelings. to Club UTM. Here's what you got to do. Yeah. Do me a favor, <laughs> Club UTM. Now, when this podcast comes out, post 1,000 posts inside Club UTM about sappy comments to Connie. Yeah, no, please, gosh. I can't. I just don't want to feel sometimes those feelings. Okay, moving on. Where are we? Do you ever feel that driving out of Walt Disney World takes you out? That last ca- question was from Grace, by the way, and this one's Sarah. Would you, sorry about that, would, it's okay. takes you out of the vacation bubble? Not at all. Well, cause I love the sunshine Florida. and humidity and I love it all. The beach, the sunshine, the humidity. Like when I go outside the Disney bubble to me, especially when we're wintertime here in New England, I still get that. It's, yeah. it's not a Disney feeling, but I still get the vacation feeling of being outside of that bubble when it's sunny and nice and warm in January. Yeah. The whole, I mean, it's a beautiful state, right? So you're still seeing palm trees and... I guess being out of the bubble, like if you're not staying on property sometimes and you know that's all you're doing, right? You're not staying on property, but you are going to be going every other day to the park. I think that's a little bit of a disconnect to me. Like it's almost like just not jealousy, but like you just want to be just and you want to be surrounded by the magic, which I guess there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's a vacation. So for you, it's a sweet dessert in the morning or something sweet. And for me, it's the donut or if I'm in Disneyland. I have to get the breakfast chimichanga. I have yeah. to get it. You have to get I it. I have to. I liked it's a rule. the afternoon one better. I know you did, but I like the breakfast one. I mean, I know that they're both good. To be fair. It's a little heavy to eat in the I morning. I was going to say, I could, to be fair to the to that delicious, hot and steamy, I probably should have stopped eating it when I was full, <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't do. So that. It's, not a, it's not a meal that you could, when you're full, you can kind of stuff down. <laughs> You shouldn't. No, 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 no. Maybe should, that's why I don't have the feels for it right now because I remember how I felt after right? I continued eating. Okay. Uh, what are your can't miss snacks at Walt Disney World? I So for sna- I think we all we do is snack. But to yeah. me, my favorite thing to do when we're in Epcot, the French fry poutine in Canada is just like a go-to, easy, delicious snack that we usually get a couple and we share because it, there's quite a bit of us and we like to, there's quite a bit of fries and we like to kind of continue our way eating throughout Epcot, but that's usually like my can't miss. And then beyond that, I would say the fruit and waffle is always something that we always get. Yeah, the fruit and waffle we always get. You usually sometimes get the chicken and waffle. Or tater barrels. Yep, those are so great. So delicious. I'm trying to think too, what else? I'm, I guess I'm nachos into from potatoes. Pecos Bills. We usually get those nachos from Pecos Bills. That's those something that yummy. we always get. That's good. Yeah, it's a lot of things. Epcot, anything at Epcot. Any, walk around wrong. any country at Epcot, and you can just get a snack there, and you'll be good to go. Next question: How easy is it to park hop Volcano Bay with the other Universal parks? Uh, well, Volcano Bay, you need to take a bus to get to, unless you're staying at Cabana Bay or one of the resorts that let you walk into it. So it's not easy to get to anyway. So what is great about it is there. The question is about hopping to the other resorts, and so what is you're forced to do is you're forced to park at the main parking area, which you can walk to the other park. So when you get to Volcano Bay. I didn't realize until recently how kind of far away Volcano Bay is from the other parks. I just, it looks, it all looks like it's close together yeah. because you see the park, you can see kind of everything from everywhere, but it's, it is kind of far apart when you're walking and navigating, but you have that one garage or that area, the parking areas, and then you can kind of walk a long way to get to Universal or Islands of Adventure, and then you got to hop on a bus to get to Volcano Bay. So it's not that difficult. It's not. And what I love about Volcano Bay is their changing rooms. We've done it m- m- many times. You can even rinse off the showers, and it's just like you can start your whole day fresh and then go to the park, and it just you feel like you went to the to your resort. Yeah, the it's. I'm not gonna say the one I go to the changing room because I don't want to give it away. It's like a secret <laughs> oh, area. Oh, it's a secret room. <laughs> it's like a non busy area. It's never towards busy. the back of the park, and I like to go in there and it's got a shower. You get your own little room to take a shower in, change in. It's amazing. If you could open your own restaurant in a Disney park, what would it be, and what kind of food would you serve? Come on, I just talked about this in the beginning of the podcast. I said, listen, Disney needs good pizza, good yeah. pizza that tastes good looks good, and doesn't make you feel gross after you eat it. Mm-hmm. And I can accomplish that. 
I think you can. I have a lot of friends in the industry that can help us with that, Mr. Iger. But you think the friend, okay, the amount, you and not to discredit your friends, they make some awesome pizza, but, and as busy as their pizza stores are, serving to, I don't know how many customers on an average day at a really busy restaurant, yeah. what would you think? Um, 500. So versus, I don't know how many thousands in Disney. Can you make a good pizza product and serve that many people? Well, here's the deal. It's 2023. Uh-huh. And since 2021 happened, a lot of my friends in the pizza industry have realized that, hey, listen, you know what? Owning a local business is hard. Maybe I should find a way to get my pizza to the masses. And they've started to create a frozen pizza brand for themselves. Mm -hmm. And these frozen pizza factories that these pizza chefs have created the recipe for are finally making a decent frozen pizza and they're making thousands of them. So yes, today it's way more possible to make it's still a good product. pizza at scale. That's not going to be like your New York pizza shop that you go to, but it's going to be better than what they serve at pizza planet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all about the ingredients that they use and the technique that they use, but you can mass produce pizza for people who go in there. That's better than what they're serving. You're really passionate about this. Yeah, I am. It's, um, a, it's necessary. Yeah. I would open a restaurant in Hollywood Studios, and I would open it at the Hollywood Hotel. It would be part of the hotel itself. It would be a big grand ballroom. And inside there, it would be exactly like it was back in 1939. The waiters, the servers, the cast members, no one knows that they have passed away. They're just like, you know, they're pale, of course. And we know that they're ghosts and not alive, but they don't. And they're serving whatever was. Do you have cobwebs on your food? You'd have cobwebs around the ballroom, but not on your food. Oh, so that okay. would be, actually, that's kind of gross now that I think about <laughs> you it. You have cobwebs around the food. <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't want old food, like deviled eggs. They could, I mean, they could probably make some spooky looking food to make it look old. I don't know if that would be appetizing, though. Eh, no, I no. think you need to make your food look good. You I can guess, have, like, you, you can have. Your area yeah, look be creepy, haunted. but not your food. Your food needs yeah. to look bright. It needs to be able to see your food clearly. Oh, I don't need to see it. I yes, need you need to, to see it. what you're eating. You can have like dim lit lidded tables like they do at the sci-fi and you can still see what you're eating, but it's not like bright. Yeah, well, the sci-fi has, it's dim in there, but the table itself has lighting. Yeah, that's so what I'm looking for. What but you're like, eating. I'm thinking of like an elegant ballroom. You know, if there's bring, a hair or a bug in your food. All right, you need you're to be going to, way too far with that. To I don't want to get grossed out. You need to be able to examine it and make sure it's okay. But I'm thinking like, just something super fancy, but but also really kind of creepy and spooky. And I think it would be cool as part of the Hollywood, the Hollywood Hotel, I, I think. Any, right. any excuse to stay there would be, would be my All right, my let's choice. go. Let me ask the next question. Yes. My fiance is not a huge Disney fan. What's the best park to take him to first? Epcot. I, I said Epcot. Or you know what I said too? I said either Epcot for East Coast. Mm -hmm. If you're a West Coast person, California Adventure. Yeah. You know, if you're on the East Coast, Epcot's a perfect place because it's got a good balance of drinking, fooding. Fooding. Funning. <laughs> funning. <laughs> and if you're a West Coast, because there's probably a lot of people who have that same feeling on the West Coast, mm -hmm. I think California Adventure is a great place because it's same kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. California Adventure has an epcot -y kind of vibe. Yeah, exactly. All right. Biggest must-do for Disney California Adventure or Disneyland? Biggest must-do? My must-do for Disney California Adventure, weirdly, because I was against this for so long, I really love the Tower of Terror, but the fact is that I actually am obsessed with a Guardian's ride. Like, the drop is something I can do, and I can do over and over again and have the best time. You know what it is? It's a different kind of drop. It just kind of... When you go on You're Guardians in California Adventure, you just go start right off the bat. There's no story that you have to wind through and then you go to the drop. You're just like in the drop right away. Do you know what it is? It's the music. It pumps you up. Yeah. That adrenaline, it gives you some kind of courage. <laughs> it pumps you up and I can do the drop and it, the drop is more of like a, you like floating. I don't know. It gets you pumped up. I love it. I think when you go to Disney, let's say Disneyland? Both. When you go to Disneyland, mm -hmm. The must-dos are everything that's not in Disney World. Yes, make your list. Mr. Toads, the submarines, Space Mountain because it's different. Um, what else is there? Uh, Haunted Mansion, Pirates, like things that are completely different in Disneyland than Disney World. That's what you need to do. Focus on that for yeah. sure. And the food and the snacks. Definitely, all that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question. At Disneyland or Magic Kingdom, if you'd only stay in one land for a day, which land would be for you? I know you got to know your answer. Disneyland. I'm choosing Fantasyland. My favorite. I could, I just 
that's the only time we argue because I want to stay in Fantasyland all day and nobody else wants to. <laughs> I mean, you like Fantasyland. It's just that I could stay there all day. Yeah. And then Magic Kingdom, of course, Tomorrowland. I'd say Fantasyland too for Disneyland. Did you? Yeah, because if you think about it, what other land has as much stuff as Fantasyland? In, like Tomorrowland in Disneyland is not my favorite land. Yeah. If you think about what's there for attractions... Fantasyland to me is the best. And then the same thing in Magic Kingdom. I like Tomorrowland. I think that I find it interesting because both of these, I think you're really feeling connected to Walt Disney himself because yeah. Tomorrowland and Walt Disney World and Magic Kingdom has the the original attractions that he worked on. They brought him over to that park. So you get connected with that. And of course, the people mover and Fantasyland, same thing. Like yeah. you're feeling more Walt Disney. So I think that's why I think subconsciously I am thinking those are my two lands that I love the most. It's either in Magic Kingdom, it's either Tomorrowland for me or at Adventureland. Adventureland's fun. Yeah, that would be my second choice. I've always been a go, go, go in the parks. Would a half park day slash pool day be a better strategy? I don't know if it'd be a better strategy. Would that be a better strategy? It depends on, you know, what you like. I prefer park. I like going to the parks every other day. If I can have it my way, I'm not doing back to park parks yeah. at all. Or go, go, go. I have to go to a park. Take the next day to like remember what I saw the day before, sit by the pool, kind of just sit and simmer in my thoughts to me. And then I have the energy to do a park the next day. You, you, you feel like you can do more when you don't have to rest for tomorrow. When yeah. you're going back to back to back to parks, you, you always, even though you're having a good time at the park that day, you're always like, all right, we still got to get up so early tomorrow to go to the park again. You kind of hold back a little when you know. Ah, tomorrow I can sleep in. I get to hang out by the pool. I can do whatever I want. I don't yeah. have to go to a park. You get to just do more. And I don't take, like, I think it'd be different if you're leaving the park to go for a nap, which we definitely do in Disneyland, especially staying at the Disneyland Hotel. It makes it super easy to do. And you just kind of, even if you close your eyes for 10 minutes, kind of gives you that energy to go for the rest of the night. But for me, I couldn't go to a pool. The pool and the sun wipes me out. Yeah. So, it does make you tired to uh, go yeah, back to the resort. I just couldn't do that. I, I, you know, even though it could be hot, I would rather be in the hotel room getting the AC versus being in the pool because I know myself. I'm come six o'clock, seven o'clock, and that's what happens to us at the water parks. Yeah, and we're like, at first we said, "Oh, these water parks they close so early." You know, other than the glow nights, of course, is it worth it? But by four o'clock, we're wiped. <laughs> All that sunshine and humidity really is a uh, something those Bostonians aren't used to. I that's guess. right. It's <laughs> a lot more question. Are we done yet? A few more. All right. Are park hoppers, park hoppers worth it for adults with no kids? Probably. Yeah. I think I think that's the perfect scenario for park hoppers. Yeah. Is without as, kids, because you, you don't have to carry around anybody or anything. You just, yeah. you're just yourself. As long as you don't suffer from, like, FOMO. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, if you, as long as you're not in one park dreaming about what's going on the next, you know, that's the problem with sometimes. Me? You and the app. Because you look at other parks in the wait times and you're like so, if you have the hopper, it's just so easy to just want to go to a different place. And then by the time you get there, all that, it can be a little difficult. So as long as you can stay in the moment at each park and just have that plan, then I think they're totally worth it without kids. Yeah, I agree. I think kids with kids, it's a little, little bit more challenging. That's all, yeah. Because they get they get tired. It's a little bit more work. Just the travel part of yeah. it. It's not necessarily super easy to, to go around. Even though there's transportation there for you. Especially with young kids, like I remember ours, we'd fall asleep on yeah. the on the bus or it's not on the monorail. Just stay in one spot and relax. Yeah. Must do breakfast spot, not character dining. Of course, we're gonna say the Kona. Yeah, that's what I had on my list. Kona, or you know what? I'm not a huge breakfast person. Uh huh. So it's either the Kona or nothing for me. <laughs> I love the Kona. You are a breakfast person. I though. love breakfast. I would say it's got to be the Kona because. Tonga, of course, but I love the macadamia nut pancakes and as the well. coffee and the coffee so the, good. It's not super themed, so you can relax and just be. It feels like you're on a tropical escape. Yeah, so I like that. Of course, the Whispering Canyon super fun, bountiful, yes. lots of food. I thought the Whispering Canyon was pretty fun. Lots of good food, but it's a little bit more high energy, right? It's not just like a breakfast and chill. It's fun, you know. I think that's the two sides of the equation if you want like a, a breakfast and chill and just relax kona yeah if you want to be hyped up and like excited and getting motivated for the day then the whispering canyon is a great place for that i agree ohana also, also people said had a great breakfast with no character, character. Oh, never mind that. no character 
What's your favorite ride and restaurant in both Disney World and Universal Park Resorts? We haven't talked about Universal in a while. No, you got to go subscribe to UTM TV podcast to get your Universal fix from us. Got some stuff over there. I'd say for me, Tower of Terror is probably one of my favorite rides in all of Disney. Mm -hmm. And favorite restaurant, probably Liberty Street Tavern. It's so good. I like it there. And then for Universal, favorite ride, Velocicoaster. And then I like the Mythos restaurant. Mythos was really good. I think... I don't know if it's for everybody because it's got a unique menu, but I I like it's it's your heritage, so I'm used to eating that kind of food, so mm-hmm. I liked it. I just think they need to take the uh, world's best out of there because it sets your expect. There's a banner above it, and it says "World's Best Theme Park Rest Voted." But is that like the world's best coffee from Elf, where it's like there, but it's not? It's a joke. I don't think so. I think they really got that award and are proud of it, and then they should be proud of it. But it, it sets your high- expectations way too high, and I. I don't know if it should anything. say world's best restaurant, but low expectations. Yeah, exactly. That's what it should say. Of course. They need to add that to it. They do. Mine is, of course, Space Mountain is my favorite. Other than Space Mountain, it's got to be, it's, I mean, the top three of for me, Space Mountain, People Mover, and Haunted. People Mover is pretty fun. They're all in Magic Kingdom. So it's just, those are my favorite. Universal Hagrid's motorbike. Hagrid's oh is gosh. great. Mine was either Velocicoaster or Hagrid's. That was a tough choice, but Velocicoaster was amazing. Hagrid's. I got. I didn't get a chance to ride it last time, and I'm so bummed. And the uh, difference between the two is you can get on Velocicoaster a lot easier than you can Hagrid's. Facts. Because you can go right. Because everybody goes right. Because Hagrid's, Hagrid's is better. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. It's like a lot more popular. People go right there. You can yeah. get on in the morning too, especially early in the morning when you get into Universal Islands of Adventure. You can get right on Velocicoaster multiple times. Hagrid's is, I think, like a life changing ride. It's kind of like how Galaxy uh, Cosmic Rewind. Yeah. Had to me in Epcot. It's just like. It's, it's a different kind of ride that you have never experienced before. No. It's epic. It's, yeah. I love it. And then. On it's the, long. It's long. I think that's what it is too. It's like finally they make a coaster that is not only got a yeah. great story. It's exhilarating. It's worth your time because it's a long ride. By yeah. the time you get off, you're like, wow, I really did a lot today. And <laughs> it's just all you did was ride Hagrid. Right. And then on the completely opposite scale i'm sorry but the high in the sky seuss trolley train ride has my heart and soul and whoever wants to ride that with me please let me know because i just want my cotton candy and be in seuss land it's fun that's a fun one this is a fun okay i think this is the last question wait there's more this last one all right what are your top disney memories funniest do you have scariest happiest or saddest at the moment (laughs) my memories Top. Come and go. Do they? Yeah. Uh, like, that might be a problem. <laughs> well, not like come and oh. go like I don't remember them. Oh, okay. But sometimes I think of funny things today that a year ago I didn't think of. That's true. Like uh, that reminds me of something embarrassing. Like right now, if you ask me what my funniest memory of Disney is, is Dan covering me on Splash Mountain, <laughs> trying not to get me wet. And then it started to pour on us. And he was yelling, not my fault. Like, right now, that's my funniest memory there. Actually, that could be all four. Funniest, scariest, I didn't know what Bruce was going to do. Happiest, because... It was funny. It was funny. So, and yeah. saddest, because it really just was awful being wet. I don't have a... I think saddest, maybe, was when my sister went with us, and we were all kind of watching the fireworks show in front of the castle. That's what, more like emotional. It was like a happy sad, though, not yeah. a sad sad. That's like an emotional kind of feeling yeah. that you get that... Where, where I do not... Where I... Tend to avoid. <laughs> my happiest moment ever at Walt Disney was checking into the Polynesian for the first time. Oh my gosh. And, you know. We're there. It was it was that moment where you felt official. Like, we've always gone to Disney, but that was the time when it was like, you know what? We made it. Yeah. We're in the Polynesian. We are staying at, we are staying in an actual room at the Polynesian. We're, we're legit. We're not just pool hopping. <laughs> we're allowed to be here. We're allowed to be here. There's no pool hopping allowed, by the way. Uh, my I think my memories go back to my parents and just being with them on the boardwalk. I talk a lot about that. And I just so happened to look through old photos the other day. And I'm just so gl- grateful I have photos because my parents moved a lot. We moved a lot as a kid and we would lose things in every move. So I don't really have any 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 dolls or stuffed animals that I purchased or that my parents got for me, any souvenirs. But I do have the photos, which I'm super grateful for. And so there's one that I remember, and I bought my Mickey Mouse doll, my very first one, and I just love that. But being with the kids now, I would say the definitely being on the Poly Beach was was 
my happiest moment. Just being on the beach with them. It's probably the same trip you're talking about. Oh, no. This is before we stayed at it. This is when we, yeah, this when we weren't toured. legit. We were toured the resort. And we got some drinks. We got the no hitos. Yeah. And we went onto the on the kids got their Shirley Temples, and we went onto the beach to watch a movie, and it was just amazing. That's my memory forever. I think another funny memory that just popped into my head was renting the Surrey bikes around the boardwalk. That was the funniest one. Yeah. You know, there was two of us, right? There was two families. There was eleven of us, so we had to get two bikes and. My nieces were in, like, they were, like, 12 <laughs> or 13 years old, sitting at the front of the bike. They had to squeeze in there and so trying to pedal those things. I think I had all six of the youngest kids with me, and it was you with my uh, brother-in-law and my sister and, like, the twins. And you guys had, like, all adults riding your bike. And I had me and six kids that couldn't reach the pedals How and like we trying that? to keep up with you guys and racing and it, with me everything's competitive so i had to win mm -hmm. going up that hill and then coming down the hill coming in hot and like ringing the bell trying to not to crash into people like that was a really fun time that was a we've had a lot of we've been very grateful yeah. there's been a lot of but again like that's why i like to remind folks to just try as much as they can to just remember to unwind detach be in the moment because i don't know if it would po be possible to make those kind of memories funny silly unless you did that and you sometimes know? you look at the surrey bike right and you're like oh 30 minutes that's not a lot of time trust me it's a long time it's more than enough yeah. at 15 minutes i was like can i give this back <laughs> and the kid's like no let's go around again i want to go there's, i couldn't do it there's one in here i'm going to include your top disney memory your proudest memory was when i went on space mountain for the very first time your proudest memory yeah that was my, I was so proud of myself because it was me and my cousin and we were about the same age and we were going on this attraction for the very first time and it was intimidating. And back then when we were growing up, Space Mountain didn't have the same queue. So you could actually see the rocket above you as you're waiting in the queue. And it looked like it was a bazillion miles in space. <laughs> it was so high and frightening from where we were standing. And don't forget, you would have to wait. There was no, no such thing as a lightning lane or whatever. So you're sitting there waiting for an hour and a half watching this thing that's like literally going to Venus above you. And I was with my cousin and my older cousin. Um, he was all talk. You know, he was like the coolest kid, whatever. And he chickened out. <laughs> Halfway through the line, he decided, you know what, I, I can't do it. And I, me and my cousin were so proud because we stuck it through and we made it and we rode and the rest is history. <laughs> that's that's a great story. <laughs> so I would really say, proud. you know what, a proud re uh, something that happened to us recently, I think mine's not as good as that. Well, it could be. <laughs> I don't, you know but what? But like, that's a memory you had as being proud of yourself. I think. I was proud of myself. Proud, sure. Something that made me proud of recently was two things. The great community we built in Club UTM, like so many. All right, people, now you're getting serious. See, this was mine was silly. Well, listen, I'm serious. Like a lot of people have said, like they, that's a great escape for them. Like they get to go to that group, and there's no judging or, you know, people picking on anybody else for comments or for things that they like. It's just a very open, fun uh, community. It's just great that we, you who are listening to this podcast, have helped us build that. And being in our last UTM, so we, every month we have a meeting with our UTM travel team. And this has nothing to do with you us asking you to book travel. You can or you can't. I don't care. Yeah. But seeing we have 70 agents that work with us and seeing how dedicated they are and awesome they are and what a great team we have of people over there, that's a really proud moment for me. It was like, you know what? We did a couple cool things. We have a great community of folks who want well, I gotta to get more about Disney. Well, I got to change my answer now. You and just now we have a <laughs> bunch of great agents that are building this business that of course. we started from the ground up. And it's yeah. been a long, fun ride. Don't get me emotional. Dan was, talk, Dan was talking about our team the other day, and I lit, I probably have it on screen, but I was I was tearing up. I am so proud of everybody. I am really grateful for all of you listening to make it possible. And if there's one thing that we ask of you to please do is just to continue your support, listen to the show, subscribe yeah. on our YouTube. Just really love this community that just a fun escape for all of us, right? This just yeah. a love of Disney. Listen, some, some days get hard for us. Like we put a lot of content out and sometimes we're just not in the mood. And the <laughs> reason we push through yeah. is because we get messages from people who are like, you know, the amount of emails and DMs and messages we get from people like, you know what? I wasn't having the greatest time and I went on a walk and I listened to your podcast and it got me pumped for my next trip. Like it guilts us into doing this podcast a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I think... In a good way. In a good way. Like, you know, we, we want we, to do it for you. It's a bigger picture than just us sitting here bragging about our trips. 
Right. No one wants to hear that. No. But we want to entertain you. We want to put on a good show that makes you smile and have a good time. And and listen, you're on this planet for such a sh- short amount of time. You want to maximize your happiness and look forward to something. And sometimes looking forward to your next trip is the best part of the trip. Say that again. Right? All right. All right. That, let's, that stop, said, let's stop here. Okay. <laughs> Too many feelings, Connie. You'll 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 be okay. If you made it this far in the podcast, you're gonna have to go over to our YouTube channel Please and see Connie it. cry. Oh, great! <laughs> We're not cutting that out. All right, let's go. All right, thank you guys so much for checking out the podcast. I think we covered a lot. It's an hour and seven minutes into the show. Wow! I'm literally on the edge of my seat, like pacing back and forth I as know. we're recording the I end keep... of this because I'm uh, I'm getting a little antsy here. You're antsy too, and it's bad because I'm like. I, I know. So sorry about the audio flushing papers and hitting the microphone towards the end of this podcast. We just, just lost like we, people. We've been trying to like stay composed. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.